and welcome and welcome to this video on microwave passive components in the ANSYS electronic desktop. The wireless and IoT applications have expanded the use of microwave and RF front end components from using mostly communication networks to RF front ends for industrial, medical, agricultural, transportation, energy, telemetry, environmental, as well as military applications among every applications in our daily lives. And we've seen the need for speed as we hear 5G becomes 5G plus, 6G. We hear new frequency ranges, both lower and higher frequency ranges, increased bandwidth, lower latencies, and these factors present a series of challenges that require adjusting new as well as previously ignored problems or problems that did not exist before when the spectrum was available and signal interferences were less. There's a need for increased innovation in the way that the RF front end hardware is designed and fabricated, especially in wireless mobile communications. Many wireless systems are portable and we need to have a smaller form factor. We need new designs, miniaturization, and integration of the microwave front end electronics. Size reductions, they can be accomplished in many ways. Improved materials allowing for smaller designs, for instance, with materials of higher permittivity. Improved fabrication techniques to fit more components in smaller volumes. Making lump designs instead of distributed. Integrating the various components in the front end for size reductions of the entire full system. Let's take for example a typical front end system which may be connected like this. The receiver front end as in a base station in your smartphone, any wireless device that wireless signal comes in through the antenna element or elements and on that receive side the signal is weak because of the various propagation effects. There's a LNA to help pull that signal out of the noise. The signal probably also gains some interferences on the way so a filter is required to eliminate any of that signal frequency not of interest. And now that we cleaned up the receive signal, we need to redescribe that signal frequency by changing its frequency or perhaps separate magnitude and phase information or just redundancy. So some microwave components that typically form part of that front end are the filters, the couplers and dividers. And mostly we use Z0 equals 50 ohms for transmission line impedance and for input and output loads in our design equations. Now if this 50 ohm matching impedance step can be eliminated and we can integrate the components and then move away from these discrete components, we can lower the transmission line loss at all of these interconnects, thus improving device efficiency and get size reduction. And we know as the operating frequency increases, the wavelength reduces. So manufacturing tolerances also need to be considered. And it's sometimes difficult to physically realize the required trace width for these higher impedance lines or exact quarter or any fractional percentage of that wavelength. Different material technologies, new electronic designs or new manufacturing limitations can also be virtually tested within the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short. In this series of modules, we'll use some common passive components, specifically a microstrip filter, a branch line coupler, a Wilkinson, a T-junction, and maybe a curved junction as module examples. Of course, we're not limited to just these examples, but they're popular components that are used in our reference microwave engineering textbooks. And we'll go over the basics with their corresponding critical design points and show how we can use AEDT to modify these critical features using parameters to help you redesign our next generation of wireless devices or any device design. Thank you for watching this video and for more videos please go to ansys.com forward slash courses today for additional video models on ANSYS electronics tools and how we can integrate and couple all our tools inside a single platform.